I guess. We've never seen the diner from this perspective. This might not be a, the same diner. I don't know. So, just today, somebody in the Echo Discord was f showing the source images for all of the photos. Because mm -hmm. they were just... they're. I think they were able to use, like, reverse image search. And they're, like, close enough that it'll bring up the original ones still. And it's just very surreal to see just like the real life images and be like like like, like how weird how weird would it be to walk into like a motel parking lot and register hang on a minute <laughs> wait a minute wait a minute this is the exact same place did if that happened i'd be like i'm not staying here I'm not staying here i dab my napkin in tj's glass of water wiping off the sticky syrup stain on, on my seat before sitting down God, we've all been there ew I wouldn't want to sit in that. I just I would just go somewhere else. No, it's like a, an IHOP. Like every time you go to an IHOP, you're like, okay, I gotta like wipe the syrup off this part of the seat. Ew. No, it's like hella horrible. I've definitely done this before. Gross. See, people, it's why syrup. It gets everywhere. Why, don't, why doesn't IHOP clean their seats? They do, but sometimes they miss a spot. I don't believe you. <laughs> no, I've definitely done this. I have not had to deal with stir with syrup stains at breakfast places, so it seems like a uniquely bad IHOP problem. It's that weird vinyl seat that like the, and the syrup just gets stuck on it and if you if you do like try to slide across the booth you can feel the one spot that has like uh, i don't like that <laughs> the one part that's like tacky Ugh, so that's... you're like you know i have taken apart and recovered so many of those seats the booth seats you just find french fries inside and like crumbs and there's so much transportation involved honestly uh because they're just so bulky but each one's relatively a quick job to replace the material on so you just spend so much time just loading a bunch of booths into the back of a of an avalanche, and then just hauling them across town to a shop, and then back. You'll be you'll be done like the same day usually. Links get the, the links gives me a little look before taking a sip from his glass. Ah, about time. Here they come. Flynn's peering out the window toward the sheriff across the street. The sheriff's it's the sheriff's place. Sure enough, our trio of friends exit the glass double doors, checking for traffic before crossing over to us. Good job, guys. Very responsible. A few reporters from the parking lot spot them and try to get their attention, but Leo ushers them forward. He mutters something, and, and Micah laughs, glancing over his shoulder. Jenna just shakes her head, clearly annoyed but relieved nonetheless. A few more squad cars roll out honking at the news vans to get out of the way before heading down in the direction of Echo. The police were sure busy in there. Yeah, no wonder. They're all gonna be deep shit for their lack of response to all this. And I'll, I'll see it to it. Do you know my aunt is the mayor? <laughs> what was it, 14 hours before they even set out a squad car to investigate the blackout? Well, the detective I talked to claimed they sent them earlier, but there was some kind of traffic trouble. They couldn't get to us. Oh, yeah, traffic trouble. That sure is a fucking valid excuse to ignore a whole town suddenly losing its internet and telephone communications. Flynn grunts, and the Gila, the Gila looking over towards the quiet ram at his side. We're still... He's still wearing his dirty tank top, though the EMT has bandaged the cuts on his arms and fetlocks. Fortunately, Leo's dad called and said that he's gonna pick up a fresh pair of clothes for him. He also stated that Leo, Flynn, and Carl could stay over to their house while the authorities sorted everything out. I was expecting a time skip, because that happened both of the last times. This is our first time actually having a next day. Yeah, I know. Usually it's just like everything kind of solves itself yeah. or whatever. Because thinking about the logistics of this kind of stuff is tedious. It's like in horror movies, how like at the end, like the, the cops show up or whatever. And then maybe, yeah. maybe like there's a kid sitting in the back of an ambulance with a blanket over him, you know, and it's like you just know that they're going to have to explain all this shit. And but no one wants to watch that happen because that's like the boring the sh part. The shock blanket. Yeah. It, it, yeah, it's always, they always just wake, it just shows them at like a Waffle House a week later and they're like, yeah, nobody believed us about all the stuff that happened. It's crazy. Well, like, I mean, uh, that's honestly one of those things I think about all the time when I watch horror movies where I'm like, having to explain what yeah, you saw. Yeah. Like, like, what is the likelihood of this person or this, this being, character yeah. being arrested? For yeah, the what's, the like, what's the like what's likely of the of the survivor being charged with all of the deaths? But and sometimes like the deaths are so uh, supernatural that it's like 
they would grill this person in an interrogation room for like days and not be able to figure out how the fuck they did these weird things to their bodies and stuff. I always yeah. think about the the dumb logistics I of like horror movie. Th- logic. I think they usually just skip past uh, thinking about it too in detail, and instead they're just like, "You sick fuck! What you did to those people!" And they just like don't think about like how impossible it was. It doesn't matter. It's like you're the last person left, and that person's gonna be like imprisoned during like the sequel when it all starts happening again <laughs> Dude, there's a couple of movies that do that yeah but usually it's like they're like a psych ward now it's like the end of um, oh yeah like i think halloween or like, halloween the, or like yeah. uh ali larder from final destination is in a hospital in the sequel and they like go to t- they go to her to like be like the mentor character that can explain what's happening yeah I was gonna say, she's the blonde one that i fell in love with i think right she's the blonde one yeah she's the she's the uh She's the suspect in Legally Blonde, and she's one of the characters in Heroes. <laughs> I became hyper aware of who sh- of who certain actors were in a very specific period of time. So like, 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 I got really into Heroes as one of the first like shows I got really into as like a, a late teenager or something like in high school. And so I was, I became hyper aware of like, oh shit, Ali Larder is in this and that and that, and then I just stopped, I just stopped noticing her in anything at some point. Well, I don't know if she's done things for a hot minute. Like, Greg Grunberg, which plays the cop, was in uh, Rise of Skywalker because J.J. Abrams just keeps using him for some reason. And so Charlie from Lost and Greg Grunberg are just two random extras throughout that movie for some reason. Just like they were in the first one, but not the middle one because they're just J.J. Abrams people. I Lost is one of the shows I got into first and then I gave up because I was like, this <laughs> makes no sense. I'm going uh, to quit while I'm ahead. It, de- it definitely feels like the ending of each season was made by a Mad Lib generator that just like... Well, the fucking polar bear shows up, and I'm like, what the fuck? Like, okay, no. <laughs> like, there's a season finale where somebody just walks into a cave and turns a giant pirate wheel, and then the island teleports. And then the, that's the end of the season. And it's like, no. well, we'll try to justify this next year. Fuck you. <laughs> hard, hard no. Like, every season finale just feels like it's trying to grab your attention by just having pulling some bullshit, and then they'll just have to try to justify it all next season afterwards. Being being convoluted is one of my biggest complaints about any the plotline of any TV show. It happens yeah. a lot in anime specifically, but I have... Uh, I have exceptions for if it's so convoluted that the wackiness like outweighs JoJo's. JoJo's. That's exactly what I was gonna say. <laughs> the, the the wackiness is like it's worth it. But what's funny about that show in particular is that it is convoluted, but it's like you don't. It doesn't like weigh on your brain at all. You just accept it and move on, and like you don't think about it or like mull on it. Every for a long twenty time. minute episode of JoJo's is people explaining ten seconds of of action happening. <laughs> It's like, oh, the fr- the guy who controls weather can make frogs rain from the sky because sometimes it rains frogs in some countries occasionally in the course of history. That has happened technically, but the frogs I are poison. Are there poison dart frogs? Actually, has uh, poison <laughs> dart frogs, and when they touch your skin, your skin melts. I feel like the, we're stretching the definition of rain heavily. Uh, yeah, I know, right? It's like, like I, it's I like think okay, guy. Like maybe there was a storm. And then some dr- there was a t- frognado. <laughs> I have a stand. Like frogs do not dissolve. They, they they do not like evaporate and then condense into frog clouds and then rain frogs. Like <laughs> <laughs> the frogs will just start like lifting off the ground because they're being sucked back up into the, into the atmosphere for further. Yeah, a much more interesting rain. world would be very strange. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> kind of go to go to a diner. I haven't been to one for a while. We'll go to a diner soon. He also stated that Leo, Flynn, and Carl could stay over at their house while the authorities sort everything out. But not out. Chase or Jenna. Fuck them. They're they're over there being love interests or whatever. Yep. They specifically excluded like half the like Micah can't stay, <laughs> Jenna can't stay, yeah. Chase can't stay. After a whole arc about how Micah didn't have anywhere to stay and you should have been there for him. <laughs> yeah, that's the one Leo, character Leo's, da- <laughs> Leo's father is like, fuck my guy. He looks at him and he's like, no. <laughs> His stussy's backwards. He, he's, not, he's not fit for civilization. <laughs> Since they closed off Flint Road and uh, access to Echo, uh, no one can exactly go back for their stuff. Not that we're in any rush to go back, of course. The ram stares at the checkerboard pattern tablecloth, uh, table uh, top, saying nothing. Flynn frowns, nudging the ram with his shoulder. Hey, fat ass, why don't you take a look at the menu? 
I bet some chocolate chip waffles and ice cream sound good right about now, eh? See, he loves him. That's so cute. He's, he's, it's the only time he smiles. The lizard, the lizard smiles down at him as he slides over a menu. Carl looks up for a moment, then sluggishly flips it open. I... I think they serve your parents' brand of ice cream here. TJ forces a smile with a strange sight, which which is a strange sight in and of itself. A happy face usually comes so naturally to the Lynx, but now he just looks frazzled. Understandable, really. Uh, something... Something cold sounds good right about now. Fuck yeah, I bet. The ram flips to the next page, though I can see he's not really reading anything. His face starts to scrunch, and he exhales through flared nostrils. He scrunches again, and soon his gaze falters, his arms begin to shake. His eyes press shut, and he lets out a nearly inaudible sob, tears rolling down his cheeks. Oh, poor Carl. Flynn reaches over and puts an arm around him, tugging him close. Shh, it's okay. He squeezes the ram's shoulder. Carl sniffs, hiccuping once before, letting his muzzle push into Flynn's chest. Oh. <laughs> TJ looks away, his own eyes be beginning to water again. I'm gonna order you the banana split and a big glass of lemonade. He pauses. Also a salad. For your health and shit. The lynx begins to quietly cry, though, though keeps his face hidden by a napkin. We must be making quite the scene for the other folks in here, but I rightly don't give too much a damn. However, this is all making me realize that I sure could go for a hug right about now. Flynn, still holding the traumatized ram, looks at me across the booth with a soft frown. As the two non-weeping members of our group here, I guess that's there's some solidarity in that. Not that I particularly feel great or anything. I certainly feel a lot less numb than I did in Echo, though. Thinking about all that happened really freaks me out, so I've just been trying not to. At least right now. Chase. Yeah? Thanks. His tone of voice is so strange and sincere, I can't hide my look of surprise. Uh, no problem. Though, I think we owe most, the most to Jenna and Micah. Yeah, I, uh, I already talked to them at the station. Never would have thought that little shithead bat would ever do anything that didn't serve himself. Yeah, he's pretty cool, I guess. I kind of think you'd get along with him. Yeah, they're both like uh, sarcastic punks. Yeah. No, Micah filled the exact same role that, that Flynn normally does as being the person that just fucking shouts his, everything he's thinking immediately and does not have any. Bunch. Yeah, has no apparent, like, uh, etiquette for the situation or no delicacy. I'm not sure who does in this party. TJ? Yeah, it's funny because you're supposed <laughs> like, to say Jenna, but Jenna no, fucks Jenna, up a lot. Yeah, Jen, Jen, Jenna, based on how she just was described, felt like she'd be that character, but she's constantly not been that character in re in reality. I mean, TJ's kind of just daft, so he might be the most delicate just on accident, because there's a lot of things he just doesn't understand are happening. Yeah, but I think because of past events, he's also actively dodging entire topics all the time. Yeah. Like, there's a lot that goes unsaid. See, we know it's not fucking Leo. No. But yeah, we, uh... She, Jenna was like kind of we, we got like a vibe about her that seemed contradicted by her outburst against Carl and his route but ever since then it's kind of seemed like that's actually just what she does sometimes <laughs> unexpectedly because there, there's a lot of that with Leo in this route well she's definitely the most um, like heady and articulate but at the same time I think she does get like emotional responses every once in a while that are definitely not thought out well. No, and she thinks she sh and she thinks she's smarter than everyone, so she just thinks she feels completely justified in the, in the in just like dressing people down. Yeah. When there's like often no upside to doing it. You're like, what is Jenna like, doing like, what right is, now? What is your tact? Like what yeah. is, what is your strategy in in saying this right now? It's not well thought out. 
Lin lets out a little grunt, running a hand up and down along the, the ram's arm. Wouldn't push it that far. I guess we'll never know, because I'm moving the fuck out quick-like. My house is probably worth jack shit now, even less than it was before, but I'll worry about money later. TJ wipes his eyes, clearing his throat. Maybe... Maybe you should start one of those online fundraiser things, since this is getting so much attention on the news. I'm sure there's plenty of people, like the folks at my church, who would be happy to donate to help you get on your feet. Take charity from strangers? Lynn looks out towards the news vans outside. A particularly antsy looking newswoman is currently getting chewed out by a police officer in SWAT gear. So it looks like the news lady is grilling him right back, shoving a microphone in his face. To think that's what I want to be one day. A guy with a camera chasing tragedies for profit. Nightcrawler. I was right about to say, <laughs> like Nightcrawler. Maybe I should change my major. Oop. Microphone demolished. I glance back towards Flynn and Carl. The ram still visibly crying, but no longer racked by quaking sobs. For some reason, I smile, if only for a moment. Or you could just marry a wealthy heir you helped save from abduction a couple hours ago. <laughs> I'm sure that comes with some financial stability. TJ immediately stops crying, blinking at me, then Flynn across the table. Flynn's eyes go wide before he quickly furrows his brow. Fuck you, Chase. Despite everything, if the lizard could blush, I have a feeling he'd be doing so right now. Carl does seem to hug onto him a little tighter. <laughs> I'd say yes, if you asked me <laughs> to marry you. <laughs> the bells on the front door jingle as they're pushed open, and I can see Leo peeking in search of us. Once he spots our booth, he, gest he gestures in our direction towards the others, and they make their way over. I swear, those fucking useless pigs were gonna keep me locked in there indefinitely till you vouched for me. Just because they can't do their fucking job, they gotta find someone to pin all this bullshit on. Why not the kid with the record? They're still trying to figure out what exactly happened. And they won't, because it ain't the sort of thing that can be figured, you know? Oh, yes, I know that now. Jenna closes her eyes for a moment, though they once again, uh, Though they open again as she startles from Leo coming up behind her. He's about to speak when a particularly rotund alligator woman saunters up beside me. She's wearing a white polo shirt, jeans, and a blue pancake house apron. Why, hello there! Y'all got enough room here in the booth? She smiles, seemingly unfazed by the sorry state we all look to be in. Eight people's a lot. Why y'all crying? <laughs> I suppose when you work at a 24-7 uh, diner in the middle of the desert, you see some oddball customers. Yeah, those fucking ladies who work at Denny's probably ain't phased by nothing. They're like, we had a guy OD in here the other night. Like, <laughs> His this is body's nothing. still here. <laughs> <laughs> We're serving it up for breakfast. TJ blinks, then mutters an apology as he scoots himself over, closer to Flynn. I do the same, and Jenna moves to sit beside me. <laughs> Micah and Leo take the opposite side. We're in a long corner booth that actually has several mini tables, but with all of us together, we're shoulder to shoulder in here. We each tell the waitress what we want in no particular order. Micah practically blurts out what he wants. Two hash browns, six house-style waffles, toast with strawberry jam, and a side of bacon. Two hash browns? He's got taste. Yeah, honestly, the hash browns are where it's at. But he, also, he knows to get the strawberry jam. It's important. <laughs> yeah, nobody wants the fucking grape jelly. Fuck that. <laughs> Meanwhile, I ask for a large iced tea and a bowl of vanilla ice cream. That's a stupid order. <laughs> <laughs> That's a stupid order, Chase. Yeah, fuck Chase, you, Chase. Stupid. I hate that. All right, let, let, let's, how embarrassing is Leo going to be? Let's find out. Jenna insists I get something healthy in my stomach, and she offers to split her turkey sandwich. I, smell, I smile at her and accept, relaxing against the pleather backing of the booth's seat. Pleather? Why would there be pleather? Yeah. Unless they just mean vinyl. Well, I think, yeah, I think, I think, I mean, 
I think that is basically is that what, what they mean. Means? Yeah, no, pleather is like the pleather's same. Pleather is a stupid word. <laughs> yeah, but it's plastic leather. Our server finally gets to Flynn and Carl, and both of them don't seem to be too focused on what she's saying. Flynn is staring at his phone, and Carl's leaning into him with a distant look in his eyes. TJ gingerly nudges the Gila, and Flynn quickly looks up at the alligator. Oh, uh, a banana split and a garden salad, please, with two lemonades. Pink. What? Pink lemonade. Flynn looks at Carl with like his last shred of masculinity can't possibly bear to utter those words aloud. <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately, the waitress writes down Carl's correction with that same unjudging <laughs> smile. It's just Carl's face here is just like, no, I want, I want pink lemonade. Pink like, lemonade is good. He's, it's like, it's like, <laughs> pink lemonade is good, but it's like when, um, although with Minute Maid or whatever it is, there's one that it literally is no different. They just add coloring. It's, just, it, it's just a but, lemonade of lies. Yeah, fl lemonade. Flavor wise, uh, it's like the same. I love lemonade. It's like when my, it's like. Arguably my favorite drink that isn't coffee or alcohol, but uh Hot dog on a stick Their lemonades fucking bomb. It's like one of my favorites. Lemonade at the hot dog on a stick place. Yes The red one The red one the red one the red lemonade. Yes, there's a red lemonade. Yes, I think it's strawberry I don't know. It's just red the I red thought, one. I thought pink lemonade was strawberry. <laughs> Well, it, th this one's red. I, I think pink lemonade probably is strawberry, but or maybe so maybe questions. it's cherry. It might be cherry, but they have all I know growing up is they had the yellow one, the green one, and the red one. They serve you a bloody marmalade. <laughs> Yum. <laughs> all right, two pink lemonades. Put <laughs> on back gets a pink one too. I if that's all, I'll be back with you folks in a bit. Leo Leo didn't order. We can't judge his order. Oh shit! You're right. He's like, I want a hungry man dinner, please. <laughs> I just want, I'm like, we were just so primed to judge Leo. <laughs> I'm like, he just didn't order at all. And I think TJ didn't order. I think it was just me and Jenna and Now we'll never know. We'll never think, know. I don't think TJ or Leo ordered. I would, oh man, I kind of want, I wish I had breakfast food right now. <laughs> I wish I had like eight of those little hash bag, hash, hash bag, hash brown patties from McDonald's. Oh. I fucking love those. I was, uh, I ordered breakfast from Dunkin' Donuts last week and I ordered the hash brown, little bag of hash browns they give you. Instead, they gave me a bag of like peppered bacon and it was just a horrific substitute. <laughs> It was just this greasy, gross bag of like ba crunchy bacon covered in pepper, and I just was not ready for this switch when, when I went ordered hash browns. I just was not happy about that at all. Also, Dunkin' Donuts has really bad donuts for a place named Donuts. Um, it's kind of fucked up. Their coffee's where it's at. <laughs> their coffee's fine, but it's fucked up that they don't make good donuts at a place called Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah, you're right. I've, I've had better. I mean, I just don't expect a lot from Donuts, to be completely honest. It's just oh, we, there, there's we, a, there's we just a, have a lot of good places here that actually serve donuts. There's a donut place donuts. in town now. Hey. So I was gonna tell you, I was like, oh, I have to tell Keith. Somebody told me, and I was like, oh my god, that is I have to go tell Keith that's immediately. That's expensive to have locally. <laughs> yeah. Oh, maybe I shouldn't have told you. <laughs> maybe I should have bought you some and then acted like I went far away from them, so you'd be like, so like, you think I was you were just such a great friend. Yeah. Oh, wow. So, wow. Stepping all the way to Sacramento <laughs> just for me. Just thinking about me. Aw. I would. Carl lowers his knocking back into Flynn while the Gila goes back to staring at his phone. Can't get a hold of my aunt. Mayor aunt? Yes. My aunt who's the mayor. A girl who's a friend. <laughs> a friend girl. <laughs> Maybe she's tied up with the police, sorting, th sorting stuff out? I offer reassuringly, picking up a sugar packet from the table and emptying in my mouth like an uh, absolute cretin. Yeah, but you think she'd call me back. Leo raises an eyebrow at me from across the table, taking a sugar packet for himself. Yeah, that's a very bad sign. If you have, like, even if it does like, there's no, there's no version of her being busy where she's not, like, checking in with her family that was in the town where everyone was dying. Yeah. That's, like, the first thing you do. Hey, uh, Otter. You, sh you should have heard Carl's dad falling over himself, thinking Jenna over the phone. 
Oh, the cops in there were calling her a hero, yeah? Oh, quite you. Hey, I tried to play big hero too. All you did was get shot, loser. I just happened to get shot for my efforts. Guess you're not much of a smooth talker. Jenna groans, folding her arms in front of her chest. How is your wound doing, by the way? My wing? Well, I won't be flying again anytime soon, which I'm fine with. Fucking flying, really? <laughs> Micah's wings are largely vestigial, as I understand it. Not meant to carry a full anthropomorphic person oh, so he's in joking. flight. Hearing anthropomorphic in this context feels weird. It does feel weird. Because <laughs> they're out. literally all anthropomorphic. <laughs> <laughs> However, they're still big enough to slow a descent when falling. Or keep you in the air for a bit when you're being hung by a razor-bladed noose. How convenient. The paramedic guy sprayed me, sprayed me with some stuff, and I should be fine. I've had worse piercings. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> no. Piercings? I don't see any. Well. Well, well. Ugh. Well, if 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 those are the piercings, then they def might actually just be worse getting shot through a vestigial wing. <laughs> Do you have? Is it is it uh, a Prince Albert? Is it a Jacob's Ladder, which is a strangely named one given other uses of Jacob's Ladder? Well, considering the fucking scary movie, like <laughs> I don't, I don't want to think about uh... <laughs> the face. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Jenna frowns. Leo gives the bat a sidelong look, thinning his lips along the contours of his jowls. The wolf's attention flicks back to me before he uh, downs one of the sugar packets in his grasp. I, he and I used to swipe these from the diner all the time. Creamers, too. He'd always go uh, for the aspartame or stevia-based ones, though. No! Why would you do that? You know what, that is just would, think of Breaking I Bad. I don't understand. Remember in... Remember Breaking Bad? I haven't watched any Breaking Bad since it finished, so I'm I'm, I'm forgetting it. There's a whole point. There's a whole. There's a whole. Uh, I well. I I I know it's spoiling spoiling it now in this day and age would be like it's been out for so fucking long. But I still feel bad. But there's a whole there's a whole plot point that revolves around a person who always uses the the green stevia sugar packets at a specific restaurant. Hmm. Because that's very important. Hmm. Well, enjoy Chekhov stevia, stevia packets. <laughs> Stephanie packets. I've been, I've been explain. I've had fucking Prince Albert piercings explained to me. Oh yeah, I thought you were gonna say I've had Prince Albert piercings, no. and I'm like, why have we not talked about this before? <laughs> it's been explained to me that unlike other piercings, there's just like <laughs> the anatomy. And that's involved there is different than what you're usually piercing. Yes. And it apparently makes a horrible sound. I know someone <laughs> who is a piercer, and I'll have to ask him about that. But the thing that's scary, or the thing that's very interesting about this particular person, is that he pierced his own dick a mm -hmm. bunch of times. And I was like, wow, the uh, bravery it takes to be the one to pierce hand. your own dick. Steady hand. <laughs> My understanding is that it tends to be more- These are also like a, a more permanent kinds of piercings because of what you're piercing. But it just, um, didn't- I don't- just, I, It makes me curious and horrified just to hear the idea that it just makes a horrible sound. I'm like, what does that mean? Like, there's people who were in the room that said they wish they hadn't been in the room to hear it. <laughs> like, pop? Like, <laughs> Like, the noise that it makes. I'm like, what does that mean? <laughs> Dude, I, I am genuinely gonna ask him next time I see him about that. And I'll get back to you about what he has to say. <laughs> I can see Jenna giving us a curious glance before refocusing her attention on me. Anyway, the police were pretty happy with you too. It makes it takes me a second to realize what she's referring to, and I quickly wave a dismissive paw. <sighs> well, I'm sure I just gave them more work. That is their job, Chase. TJ, who had been relatively silent next to me, looks increasingly perplexed, his ears folded downward. With everything going on, I realize I hadn't told the rest of the gang about my discovery. Uh... For those not present, I found an old corpse on the side of the road from, like, the 70s. <laughs> this gets Carl, Flynn, and TJ's attention. 
sound is putting oh, it. That's me. Oh. <laughs> Flynn wasn't there. They made it the same color. Yeah, it's just slightly orangier when yeah. it's Flynn. Found is putting it mi mildly. You picked a patch of dirt and started digging till you found the guy's body and wallet. What? I held up my paws, shaking my head. I can't explain it. I, I can't explain a lot what of a things. a random thing to bring up at an IHOP. Like <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's recent events. It's like, hey, guy, you know, just so you all know, um, recently I found yep. a dead person. Now, yep. just so we're all on the same page, I just want you all to know. I also experienced his death and it was really bad. Yeah, and my it brain was really and my bad. dream. Like, he died worse than anyone in the actual events of this game. <laughs> yeah, dude, that's fucking awful. That was really bad. The fact that the body is so old, though, means I'm not a suspect, at least. <laughs> ah. The weirdly sour feeling uh, courses through my body, and I instinctively squeeze my tail beneath the table. But I, I, I sent you the... <laughs> I sent you the... the, the uh, There's an Animal Crossing style yeah. picture of Chase digging up a fossil in Animal Crossing. But his fossil is a is a skull. Yeah, he's like, I found a fossil, but it's like from Animal Crossing, but it's the fuck, it's Samuel's skull, and Mike was like, what the fuck, Chase? They're all doing their, their cute little Animal Crossing emotes, so like disgust and yeah. shock and stuff. Because Full Perp uh, did a series of uh, of Echo Animal Crossing crossover. Oh, I didn't know that drawings. was him. Yeah, that's really that's good. That's the, yeah, the same person. That's the one I sent you to, where it's the. Uh, where it's like Leo looking at Chase, and then the other Chase is out the window, and so on. Like yeah. Those ones. There's a few different uh, Animal Crossing ones. But they ran the guy's name through the system. His disappearance was so long ago, they don't even have a record of it anymore. They did find li living family, though. Or at least a point of contact, from what I heard. Jenna smiles. I'm sure whoever they are, they'll be grateful for what you did. After four decades? I'm not so sure. Maybe it'll just dig up old wounds, raising more questions than answers. It's not like I told the police my dream about the van or anything, or who the original owner was. To think, Sydney's dad killed a guy. No wonder he ended up the way he did. What does that mean? Hmm. We don't know what we that don't means. We don't know anything about <laughs> we don't Sydney. Know what that means. <laughs> There's a moment of silence, Micah staring impatiently at the kitchen, and Flynn dialing up his on again. Jenna exhales, breaking the quiet. Regardless, I'm just glad you're all are okay. Micah's fingers and neck are healing up nicely, and you two are finally separated. Jenna nods towards Leo and I. There's no way in hell that phrasing wasn't intentional. <laughs> finally, separated. Wink, wink. Remember yep. you guys were sewn together, but you are also broken up? Ha 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 ha. She has this self-confident smile on her face, though though when neither of us respond, it diminishes. Leo just looks kind of distant. No, way to be fucking mean, Jenna. <laughs> Not like before, of course, when he was all loopy post-beatdown. But like he's got a lot on his mind, he hasn't really processed yet. Yeah, no fucking kidding. I know exactly how he feels. Dick. Micah muses, idly tearing strips of his napkin off. Huh? Dick. That was a dick thing to say. Oh, I was going, the piercings are on my dick. <laughs> yeah, he, he goes back. He's like, the oh, that, by, by the way. Like, I, thought, a, I, thought, I thought he was resetting the conversation <laughs> the way that he said it twice like that. Anyways, back to what I was trying to say earlier when I was trying to talk about my dick. <laughs> got so rudely interrupted. Yeah, you guys really failed to take the bait there. I was going to have a whole talk. <laughs> yeah, I was hoping you guys would ask me about it. <laughs> It's real conversation starter. Are you guys even people? Like, what the- <laughs> Well, that's rich, coming from you. Mike is about to say something when Jenna cuts him off, speaking first. No. No, he's right. I thought she was saying no, like, no. No. <laughs> she brings her fingers to her temple for a moment, thinking, before focusing on Leo and I, making sure to meet our gaze. Acting like we're all still in high school, teasing you two about your relationship. It's not appropriate. And ultimately, it's driven by jealousy. Leo blinks. Jenna? It's not something I like to admit, but a lot of what I do is driven by that. The need to experience things I wasn't afforded growing up. Michael looks up from his napkin evisceration, and edges, the edges of his mouth curled into a soft frown. Flynn glances over as well. 
A prank I orchestrated over three years ago led to this whole situation. Picking out a raw nerve and leaving it to fester. My mind flashes to images of my smashed cell phone sitting on the pavement, Leo calling for me as I walk away. Do I think you two should be together? No. But is that any of my goddamn business? Also no. And for that I apologize. Wow. Lynn speaks my mind. We should go through more tragedies if it gets you to admit you're just as shitty as us for a change. Flynn grunts. Jenna waves off Flynn's comment. But seriously... Leo, don't hump Chase at a children's arcade and then destroy it when you get caught. You smashed up an arcade? I did. You know, I'm, uh, kind of a rebel. A real badass. Yeah, he looks like it. Look at his expression. <laughs> wow. What a badass. Also, it was a children's arcade and <laughs> no one else was there. Yeah. Micah's so hot for you right now. Ew. Wow, you punched a, a one pinball machine. You gotta put those piercings so to cool. work. <laughs> <laughs> Leo clicks his tongue against the roof of his mouth, letting a moment of silence pass as he glances offward. Nah, I'm... A fucking idiot. Leo seems to be purposely avoiding Jenna and I's gaze. Hey, people did worse things under the effects of the hum. Manifesting a, a tulpa of one's ex-boyfriend. It's a bit much, no? Ex-boyfriend. I suppose that settles it. Though I can feel how much it hurt him to say that. He, he smiles regardless, of course. Well, if the Tulpa's giving good head, there's not much to complain about. <laughs> Seriously, what the fuck are you guys talking about? Yeah, Flynn's like not even... <laughs> he didn't know anything about not that. Not in on the joke at all. <laughs> if the Tulpa's giving good head. Uh, I can't help but chuckle, and a few others do too, including Leo. To describe any of this in any sort of way that does it justice seems utterly untenable. Look, I reckon it's best if we put some time and a few beers between this event and us before getting into the nitty gritty details, yeah? Oh, planning another Echo meetup already? I ask, trying to sound more light-headed, light-hearted than I feel. Fuck no, Otter. We've got the internet if we want to talk. My inbox is always open, though I think therapy might be the safer bet than beers. I could get you some harder stuff. Harder than the therapy. <laughs> harder than my dick. <laughs> Jenna sighs. Like... She seems to regret the question the moment she says it. You ever had a foot-tall devil dog cake with strawberry, cherry, and raspberry filling? I know a place off the of Santa Rita and Busby in Pueblo. That's not what I thought. I thought he was, talking, I thought I thought he was gonna say, like, fentanyl or something. Yeah, I was- <laughs> that was not what I thought he meant at all. Would take your mind off anything. Does a devil dog cake have anything in it? Devil dog cake? I just thought it was gonna be a hot dog. But then, I, but then he said cake and I got confused. Yeah, he said foot dog- foot dog- fo Devil dog Does a devil dog, dog cake. cake have, like, marijuana in it or something? Like- I don't think it's a real thing. Just thought something- I'm just wondering about the hard part. Like, <laughs> he's specifically a drug dealer, so I, I when, think, he, I think when that, he was talking about a cake, I'm like, I don't know if a cake's harder than therapy, Micah. I think that was just I don't, the I joke. don't think the cake hits better than therapy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, th I think that was the the joke is like you expect him to say drugs, but he's actually just like yeah. Oh, oh, devil dogs are a thing. I'm just looking it up. It's a it's oh. like a hostess cake. Oh. Oh, but it seems like there's also you could make it a cake. Um. I don't like cake. I don't like cake very much at all. No. But it's like a chocolate thing. Pie um, is better. Oh, whoopie pie. Whoopie it's, pie. It's very similar to a whoopie pie. A whoopie pie. Yeah. Which is the two cakes with the uh, like the whipped cream in the middle? Hmm. Like it's like a, it looks like a like a moon pie. Yeah, yeah, kind of like that. Or an Oreo that's soft. <laughs> yeah, devil dog cake. Whatever. We it's learn, it's a real thing. We learn things because we Google every single thing that comes up in this place. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> it's my fault. I already said that. <laughs> 
<laughs> yes. I can also get you some heroin. I hid it in the cake. <laughs> and also a file so you can escape prison like in the cartoons. This cake has a prize in the middle. Micah, for God's sake. I'm just kidding. Christ. The cake place closed years ago. <laughs> All I have is heroin. <laughs> oh, goodness. We talk for a few more minutes, mainly riffing on what the hell we're all going to do after all this. The food arrives before Jenna and I really get a chance to weigh in, though. Not that I'm complaining, of course. The vanilla ice cream looks delicious. And Jenna's sandwich she offered to split doesn't look too bad either. She sets it gingerly on my plate. Flynn glares at his pink lemonade as if it had just insulted him. Fucking hell. <laughs> of all the things to have a limit for, like, not pink. It's like, you're already gay. You're already gay. Like, <laughs> come on. But but he's such a tough, sundere, badass guy. He can't drink the pink lemonade. Oh, no. God forbid. Like. Uh, oh, right. I just remembered with pink. Uh, I looked closer at Micah's shirt via image editing software uh -huh. to actually get a better look, look at it. I'm pretty sure it says purdy please. Purdy please. Which makes a bit more sense than candy please. I was gonna which say. Which has no protect, particular connection to anything. I saw the please but like the, the I remember trying to look for the candy and not being able to see it. Yeah. That, make, that makes sense. I think it's purdy please spelled P-U-R-R-D-Y. I definitely. It's so hard to read. So I definitely I, see I that more. I way in. <clears throat> but it's just a very because it's, it's, it's also like fittingly like one of those sort of obnoxious shirts that heart that like edgy people have that's like sarcastic well it could be like a band maybe but it's but it also just be like he because he's such a dick that it's the, the idea that his shirt says please is funny pretty please. please it's probably a band made of cats <laughs> it also could be an in universe cat band uh he glances over to carl who seems to be working up the energy to sit upright enough to eat his food. This looks like you're pissed after too many energy drinks. God, if you're pissing pink, that's horrible. That's not a good sign. That was once. Carl speaks up in a sniffly voice. The flimlet, uh, the lizard looks like he's about to take out, take a tentative drink right before his phone goes off. He quickly snatches it up. Hello? Mark. He leans forward, resting his elbows on his table on the tabletop. Yeah, hi. I left a message earlier. <clears throat> have you have you heard anything from my aunt? He frowns suddenly. Uh okay. Why? Alright, alright. Blizzard takes Carl by the shoulders and straightens him out, the bleary-eyed ram blinking some as Flynn tries to stand and scoot past him. I'll be right back. Flynn, after accidentally himp-bumping Micah in the face a half-dozen time, manages to ex exit the booth. <clears throat> he heads out towards the parking lot. I need water. Wow. <clears throat> Originally, no. <laughs> Ordinarily, I get the impression this would annoy the shit out of the bat, but he's too excited for his plate of food to complain. He dives into the bacon first, shoving it all in his mouth as a whole wad. Oh gosh. <laughs> Even Leo raises his eyebrows a bit. Don't choke. I think Micah mumbles an expletive at him. Oh, fuck you. He just looks like an actual bat eating fruit. Yeah. Like, just how fucking goofy they look. The hungry guy... The hungry guy is already moving on to his jam and toast by the time I bite into my sandwich. We eat in silence for the most part, though it's not exactly awkward. I think we're mainly content to have each other's company after everything we've been through. I can't fathom being alone with my thoughts after all this. Though in the quiet, I do get to thinking about that voice that spoke to me by the van. It seems like a distant memory now. But it was so clear. We've been together for some time. I'm with you. You are indecisive but by nature. I choose. Those words stick out to me the most. 
Glancing around at my friends, I decided to try something. I let the ambient noise of the diner fade out, focusing on trying to remember that voice, the one I've heard before. I close my eyes, emptying my mind of worries and other thoughts. I wait. <laughs> Jenna nudges my shoulder, a french fry poking out of the corner of her mouth. You falling asleep on me, Chase? I refocus, managing a reassuring smile. Oh, no, I'm just, uh, taking a moment. Oh. She nods, as if this made perfect sense, no clarification needed. You holding up alright, though? You know, I think I'm okay, actually. Really? Her tone is skeptical, though in a sort of jokey way. Yeah, really. Hmm. She finishes the rest of her fries, wiping her paws off on a, with a napkin before something catches her attention across the room. Oh, would you look at that? A jukebox. I follow her gaze, spotting it by the door to the bathroom. It's pretty retro. It even has those plastic neon-filled tubes that flash when it's turned on. Love those. You don't see many of those these days, or jukeboxes in general. I think maybe most folks saw them as more of a nuisance than a mood setter. I love jukeboxes. I mean, you have the ability to curate what's on it. Unless you go to those bars that have the digital ones where you can look up literally anything you want. <laughs> and you I can be really annoying and just put on a bunch of Limp Biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Like I was telling you before, general, generally I try to pick out songs that I think people will enjoy. And yeah. I like to do a lot of old, old country classics. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Conway Twitty. <laughs> Like, is that a real name? Yeah, you don't know Conway Twitty? <laughs> no, it's a really goofy name. <laughs> yeah, no, Conway, Mr. Conway Twitty. Conway Twitty. Yeah, no, I'll put on like, you know, some, some like Loretta Lynn or Johnny Cash or something. And usually all the old folks love it. I'll put on some Jim Croce. Like, just some, <laughs> like, some 90, oh, some like, um, like, these eyes cry every night for you. Like some, some cool stuff. Uh, but you can just be a dick and just play like, I'm going to play Taylor Swift 10 times in a row. I'm going to play. And then, oh, and then one time I was at a bar. I'm going to listen to one song 75 times in a row. There was, there was a guy at this bar and I knew it was him because he was by himself. He was there for hours by himself. And he would go up and do that thing where you can pay extra money to bypass other people's songs. So I'd put my songs in. And then he would he would pay extra money to jump in front of all my songs, and he put on like five songs, <laughs> and it was a very weird mix of music. Some of it was good, but some of it was just like god awful. And I'm like, dude, let me have a fucking turn. You're paying like three times the amount just so you can skip my my fucking you songs. You pay more out of spite. Well, it's, it's more so just like I'm more important. I want my songs on next, <laughs> and I'm like, fool. I didn't know that there was payment tiers on jukeboxes. There are, but what's funny is that you can you can download the app on your phone, and so you can put on music without anyone seeing you get up. So you can put on like really weird music and just make everyone be like, who the fuck put this on, and just baffle everyone. <laughs> It's really fun. But yeah, no, jukeboxes were only good. played the good. Beastars intro 75 times in a row. Dude, I would, I'd be like, where's Keith? Where's <laughs> Keith? Come on, let's take a look. Uh, okay. I'm not sure why this is so interesting, Dara. Because it's always fucking interesting. What's wrong with you, Chase? Music <laughs> is fun. After scooting out, she offers me her shoulder, her tail swishing gently behind her. I offer a little, her a little nod of thanks, using it to help myself stand. Leo looks up at me from his plate of chicken and waffles. So that's what he ordered. We finally know. Chicken and waffles. Chicken and waffles. I don't get it, but I've never tried it. But I don't want to? I don't eat meat, so yeah. I've never had... Like, fried chicken's not something I've eaten since I was like a little child. So... I don't know what that would taste like, but I just I just assume it's that thing that people like with the sweet and savory, and I guess yeah. it makes sense on paper. For me, partly, it's like any waffle you get at a restaurant is so big that I'm already having trouble finishing that, let alone bonus food. Like, how hung how, I'm always amazed by how hungry people are. Maybe the waffles are smaller. The baby waffles to go with the giant chicken. Uh, we made each other's gaze for a second, a few seconds, and he smiles. All right, easy now. 
The EMTs already gave my leg a proper dressing after we got to the police station. How they tried to get Leo and I to go with them to the hospital. Yet, of course, the last thing Leo wanted was for us to get all split up again. I actually agreed with him this time. Plus, I've heard horror stories about ambulance bills. <laughs> That's the real trap. It's the American healthcare system. I'm having a heart We're attack, but all like whatever you do, don't call an ambulance. Don't do it. <laughs> it needs to be a network. <laughs> <laughs> The real- the, we're ending this game on the real <laughs> horror. I relinquish my leaning on Jenna and we walk. I hobble, towards the jukebox. The music selection is pretty dated for the most part, though there's some modern dance hits thrown in there, surprisingly enough. I feel like he's gonna be on- they gotta get like on antibiotics or something. Yeah. Like. They've been like like that like an un an unclean thing went deep into like their muscle and shit over and over again. Like I, mean, I don't you think need you a can, fucking tetanus I don't shot. think you can just dress this. I think you need more. Uh bad idea. The scribbled on with permanent marker on sticky note labels. Jenna makes a show of inspecting the options, though she speaks up toward me. Hey. Hello? She lets out a little laugh, then sighs. Sorry, just I haven't gotten a moment to speak alone with you for some time. Something on your mind? She nods. A lot, actually. There's a considerable amount of things we've seen that we've experienced that will never make plausible sense to anyone but us. Jenna gestures discreetly towards the rest of the group at the booth. I notice that Flynn is still not back. It does sort of put everything into perspective, I guess. Yeah. Part of me wonders whether I made the right decision. The musing comes as a surprise. Jenna, ne Jenna would never, Jenna never won. <laughs> never is one. Yeah. I guess it kind of makes sense. like Jenna. Yeah, I guess you can kind of phrase it that way. Oh. Jenna, well. Jenna never won to doubt her choices, or at least make such doubt known. What do you mean? Well. From what I've figured from both your historical research and what Micah has said, this hysteria is cyclical. It always comes back and ends up hurting whoever is around it. Now, I don't know whether it's gas is seeping through the ground, <clears throat> weird radio signals, or something in the water, and I'm not sure anyone ever will. But what Heather wanted to do, flooding the town, that would certainly put a stopper on anyone trying to live there again. I don't think anyone is going to be wanting to stick around there for a long time after this. Except for Leo, who's going to live here forever. Yeah. I keep waiting for Leo to in any way indicate that he's moving, and he really isn't. No. Jenna's gaze shifts the tile floor beneath her feet. Yeah. For a long time. She repeats. I try to think of what to say next. In the background, I can hear Micah saying something crude about the origins of syrup. <laughs> it's like tree cum and- I was right about to say that! <laughs> you just jack off a tree? <laughs> <laughs> it's like the third time you've said that this episode. <laughs> I know, what the fuck? I glance back and see Leo chuckling and TJ covering his face. Carl stares out the window. I don't know if you can really fight forces of nature. Whatever is going on, it feels much bigger than us. But what you can do is help people, I guess. And that counts for something. What you did for Heather, despite everything she did to you, that counts. Second chances and all that. Jenna smiles. Chase, that's very nice of you to say. Very sappy, of course, but still sweet. Like the tree comb. I'm not quite sure I can fully see it that way. At least not yet. Her tail thwacks me a little, and after a brief moment of nearly teetering over, I thwack back. I think we all turned out okay, not noting the circumstances. Echoes this tiny town in the middle of nowhere, and the shitty situations brought us together in the end. And... I don't regret that. Hmm. You're stupid, Chase. <laughs> None of this was worth it. <laughs> Fuck that. <laughs> she taps her fingers tips against the glass of the jukebox, looking elsewhere. I wonder what it would be like if Sydney were still here. 
The question catches me off guard. As far as I knew, Jenna never really liked the kid back in the day. Still, I guess he was part of our group. Hence the thought. Maybe. I don't know. I don't really want to think about it, to be honest. Maybe he'd have helped Leo beat the shit out of Brian. I blink at her, the words sounding strange coming from her mouth. She looks at me, furrowing her brow. What? He was really into that wrestling stuff. I cross my arms over my chest. I guess. There's a long silence. I had a dream about him, early on in the week. And once everything started, you know, hitting the proverbial fan, I remember hearing these strange voices. She doesn't elaborate on that specific thought further, shifting focuses to me. I didn't make anything of them at the time, but noting everything that happened later... She stops for a moment. If you want to talk to me about what happened sometime, just let me know, okay? I try to read her expression, the offer seemingly sincere. I don't see any sign of judgment or scrutinizing intent to her words. As usual around her, I find myself not quite sure what to say. Whatever happened to you claiming you're not a therapist? I'm not. I'm your friend. And I want to stay that way for a long time. Despite my wariness at that original question, I can't help but feel a little fuzzy from that statement. So, just a friend, huh? Now it's Jenna's turn to be caught off guard, but the surprised look in her turquoise eyes lasts only a second. Hmm? Oh, perhaps you got the wrong impression this past week. I look at her and feel my heart starting to sink. I do mean, my mind was under the effects of a town-wide sweeping of hysteria, after all. And you're no zebra. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I can't be held accountable for my actions. However... She sucks in her lip, staring at the ceiling, as if in thought. If you wanted to take me on a proper date when we get back to Pueblo, I wouldn't be opposed. I feel myself slowly starting to grin, and have to quickly reshift my face into a less creepy expression. <laughs> uh, oh, okay. Not opposed, huh? She lets out a humored exhale, shaking her head. To speak candidly, me teasing and flirting with you around Leo, that's not really me. Or at least that's not how I want to be. I should be better than that. Otherwise, I'm no better than Flynn at the river, plucking at raw nerves. I'll admit, I was kind of worried that you were just doing all that to be competitive with Leo. Like I was some kind of game. Jenna nods. <laughs> you are. <laughs> oh, that's completely true. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just competitive. What? I was... to at least some extent. Hence the offer for something a little less... biased. I look at her, a little gobsmacked. But at the same time, I can't help but feel appreciative of the honesty. I guess I'll, uh, consider your offer. She smiles, and for some reason, she kind of reminds me of those old femme fatale types from old noir movies. In the meanwhile, I'm definitely going to start writing about our experiences here in Echo, specifically our most recent ones, how it augmented the perceptions of people, sometimes even in groups. It's almost downright paranormal. Almost. <clears throat> Nothing's actually paranormal. I'm certain there's actual inputs and variables which determine certain triggers that resulted in what we saw. On a personal note, I'm just happy none of the effects seemed to linger once we left town. No tulpa version of you hanging around Leo. No monster chasing TJ. No red figure following me. No visions of Keith for Micah or Heather. And you... Well, how's that possession by the roadside ghost working out for you? I rub my head, feeling the welt from Brian's pistol whipping peeking out of my fur. I'm pretty sure he's gone. Huh. Who says you can't run away from your traumas, then? <laughs> she winks, and I find myself smiling a little goofily. This is all so insane, but I sure am glad she's here to talk me through it. Now, Chase Hunter, the true question... She turns to face the jukebox. What should we pick? Ha 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 ha.
Only one of these leads to the true ending. <laughs> Dude, what? Oh my gosh, whatever really did affect the ending. <laughs> um, probably Soft Rock. I mean, I don't want those other ones. Soft Rock? I mean, I'd pick country, but I don't know what kind of country it you is. You don't want agro, ag- agro techno to play over the, the breakfast place. That would be such a strange, like... Um, I want that one song that goes beep beep boop bop, beep boop bop. Oh, you mean the song that goes boop boop bop? Beep beep bop boop? No, no, the one that goes beep beep boop bop, beep bop boop. <laughs> What'd you pick? I pick soft rock. But I can already tell from the font that this is uh this is Samuel. Who? Uh you know what? I don't know. How about you choose? Oh, because remember, like, because we because he chooses for us. Yeah, so we're not letting him choose. Jenna gives me a quick nod, and he is us. I think they are merging both the idea of Samuel and the idea that the player is involved in the story at the same time, which was was which is what I first thought was happening during the Leo route before he started talking immediately afterwards. Yeah, I was like, oh wow, Chase is relying on us, and then I think that's still kind of true. I, I love when games do that that weird bullshit. <laughs> yeah. It's funny because you, you play as Samuel in the prequel, so technically you play as Samuel for two games. Because we're, we're playing, playing Samuel, Samuel playing in, in Chase, a way. <laughs> seemingly. Whatever you say. Oh, here. This one looks good. She leans in and presses a button on the machine. Dude, uh, <laughs> I'm trying to think what, what she could pick that would be really cringy. <laughs> I'm all out of love. I'm, I'm so, so lost without you. you. <laughs> That'd be okay. I was thinking like, Gucci gang, Gucci gang, Gucci gang, Gucci gang. Spend three racks on a new chain. My girl loves to do cocaine. TJ's next. Oh, look at him down there. Look at He's going to get ruined. <laughs> Bad stuff's going to happen to you. <laughs> Every route's bad for the person in it. And like, Actually, Jenna got off pretty easy. Yeah, no, she's fine. Jenna got off by far the easiest so far in her own route, as far as, like, things happening to her. She even had it the easiest during the Brian scene, out of all the people in the Brian scene. (laughs) She's a fucking girl, he didn't want to fuck around with the girl. (laughs) Because Brian's gay, so he just was like, I don't know, Jenna's over there. Yeah, whatever. Whatever. She's, she's She's, like, last on the list. She's my, I'm least interested in that one. We even never deal with Jeremy again. We yeah. Just, we just straight up never see Jeremy and Clint after the uh, after they betray us. I'm still surprised that happened. Like, I, I guess Jer- that Jeremy didn't probably know the full extent of what was going to happen, but he really did just turn in his sister and leave. <laughs> and was yeah, like, I like never right, never check on us again. <laughs> For all he knows, we've been like raped and thrown in a ditch and dead. Yeah. Like, what a good brother. Jeez. Given, given that specifically uh, Micah blames uh, Brian for Keith, so leaving your own family with Brian is just a lot. Also never saw Duke again. Yeah, that's this, true. This is the first route that, that Duke has survived. We didn't have that issue with... Um, do we have well, that? we don't know if he survived, but we, it's the first one we haven't seen him die in. Have we had that whole situation with Janice in this one? With her peeing on the side of the road? Did that happen in this playthrough? Uh, I think that's happened in every route. I, I don't remember. If, I think we might have seen it this time. We didn't. I mean, like, see it. In one of the routes, we were in the car and witnessed it. And another one. In another one's, uh, uh, Flint we, we, we heard Flint the story about it. it. Yeah. I don't. I remember it. it some of the earlier days blur together between routes because... Th- they kind of set up similarly. Yeah, and the really specific weird stuff hasn't happened yet. Special thanks to Judas. Zeke, the tiger. <laughs> yeah, not Zeke, the person. <laughs> you don't want to specify... You, you gotta specify it's not the other Zeke's. You know, the tiger. You remember the tiger, right? How could I forget the tiger? Yeah. Now I'm just wondering... Like, there's probably a bad ending, right? Well, yeah, we chose Micah. 
to I'm like, I'm like, we only had one major choice in this one and I it was it was to decide who to have um talk down like Heather, basically. Even that one didn't seem like it even affected what it happened. It didn't seem like that's, that's why I'm curious as to like what would have happened because because it's not like Mike is mad at us or Jenna's mad at us. I felt like one of them would be mad yeah. at us. It has it has more of the feeling of some other kind of choice based games where like the choices you make collectively affect something. And so you might need to like fast forward through the game from choice to choice and pick like different ones entirely whenever because we had a lot of choices this route. I, I thought we didn't. I thought we just had that main one. No, we had, like, we had, we like, have? choices about, like, like there was a point where we said, where we had the choice where we could say, uh... Oh, like, like we're in it together or something. Yeah, there, there was one where... Like, reassuring her or something. I'm trying to remember exactly the phrasing. I named the video with that, the, the choice we picked specifically, but it was, like, essentially our take on, like, our traumas and what they did to us collectively and so on. Like, there was conversations about stuff in general that we were themselves choices that could have affected our relationship with Jenna or well, something? One of them seemed to imply individuality. The other one seemed to imply camaraderie. So we picked the one that was in camaraderie, if I remember right. Yeah, I'm But curious. I felt like the only choice that really... I don't know. That, that, that Jenna or Micah one was the one that I thought like would make the yeah. biggest difference, but it doesn't seem like through dialogue that I can discern that there would have been a difference, but maybe yeah. there was. Jenna's kind of like lukewarm with us. In terms I'm, of, like, I'm she's... Gonna, I don't even know if she actually likes us. I'm gonna ask to see if there's something else to go for, and then that'll be next episode, if it exists. Otherwise, we'll do some of the the side stories that it's, that it's time to do. Okay. Before TJ. And, uh... Probably another break to play another game between now and TJ's route. Just based on logistics. We'll see. We'll Bye. see. I do what I'm told. <laughs>